Welcome everyone to the class of marketing research and analysis. In our previous uh, uh, classes, we had discussed about uh, the research design, uh, we spoke about exploratory research and its types, uh, then uh, we uh, did with uh, descriptive research okay, and uh, which uh, is basically was a part of the conclusive research design as we had stated earlier conclusive, this was a non-conclusive right, non-conclusive. So, one more uh, 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 remains in the uh, conclusive research design is the causal right. So, I hope uh, we all remember ki in the descriptive we had started uh, discussing about that during the descriptive research, uh, the researcher tests his hypothesis which he has formulated maybe during the exploratory condition in the, in the exploratory research he has formulated or he has developed the uh, hypothesis and then this testing of hypothesis is done in the descriptive and the causal stage right in the conclusive stage. So, uh, what is basically the causal as uh, the name suggests causal is basically I have said it is a cause and effect study. Okay it is a cause and effect study. So, uh, most of the principles of uh, you know uh, nature or uh, you see for example, the Newton's gravitational force or anything we talk about is basically nothing like a cause and effect right. So, the apple fell because there was a gravitational force okay. Uh, the sales of a company increases because of uh, maybe advertising right. Companies like uh, Paytm and all are sponsoring cricket events for example, the cricket uh, test match series or the world cup. Uh, the football league for example, somebody is sponsoring the Wimbledon all this they are doing because to increase their uh, sales and their presence uh, the brand value in the market. Okay. So, uh, basically what is let us see what is the causal research right. Also known as explanatory research it investigates the cause and effect relationships as I said right. So, causality shows a directional relationship now that is very important to understand it is a directional relationship between an independent variable or, intera or interaction between the independent variables and a dependent variable. Now, what does mean? It means that let us say uh, the basic for equation of regression is y is equal to a plus b of x okay, where y we say is our dependent variable, the x is our independent variable a is our constant or intercept you can say okay, intercept, b is our slope right. So, how uh, much change happens in y due to a change in x is what we do in a cause and effect study basically. So, suppose there is only one variable we say it is x, there could be more than one variable also x1, x2, x3 goes on till xn. Okay. Now, these variables will have an effect on the dependent variable y. So, how it is affecting and what is the relationship? Is it for example, let us say uh, we will say that uh, trust, trust affects, okay. trust affects loyalty, loyalty. So, loyalty is my dependent variable and trust is my independent variable. So, if there is a change in trust automatically my loyalty or patronage for the store or company will vice versa increase or decrease. Okay. So, what is the relationship? So, if it is positive or negative that matters. Okay. Two basic uh, objectives of the causal research is to understand which variables are the cause and which variables are the effect. right? So, it is uh, it is some you have to un one has to understand ki which is my dependent variable in this case it is not vice versa it is not that uh, you know trust becomes trust is my dependent variable it cannot be and loyalty is my independent no no right uh, loyalty is my independent variable. So, what I am saying here is it is not uh, it is it is not possible right so trust cannot be will not uh, uh, get affected uh, by loyalty right it cannot be uh, it uh, for example you see so i am as i am saying loyalty changes because of trust here trust does not change of because of loyalty 
not the vice versa. So, one has to understand in uh, when there are several variables for example, let us say what affects the uh, popularity of a popularity of a brand or a company let us say. Now, it could be several factors all right, the several factors could be the quality could be the uh, 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 kind of promotion right, could be the uh, uh, record or the success factors right. So, many things uh, uh, are there. So, popularity is may be depends upon these. So, one has to understand ki what are my dependent variables or what is my dependent variable and what are the variables that are affecting those dependent variable right, independent variables. Determine the nature of the relationship between the causal and the pre uh, effect predicted. Now, for example, you must have seen in many uh, diagrams or you know many hypothesis uh, testing, the relationships are given like this. Let us say x affects y okay y uh, uh, and x also affects let us say uh, a for example now this it affects let us say positively this it has affects negatively so the relationship between x and y is a negative relationship but x and a is a positive relationship so that also has to be seen the researcher has to determine and this determination comes from or determining this comes from a basic understanding of the theory behind the process okay so uh, uh, one has to be very careful ki what kind of uh, uh, events would happen and what is the literature uh, study behind it right what is the backing it says uh, let's take an example example of a causal research would be a restaurant wanting to find out why fewer customers were demanding one of its sandwiches so the management might experiment to find out if possibly the sandwich current price was a problem because of the fewer demands or a new competitor's presence what was the cause so what is the cause to uh, suppose the he wants to know ki what is why it is uh, that people are the demand is uh, not much so was it because the pe people felt the price is high that could be one or was it because that there is a new competitor in the market new hotel or new restaurant coming up which is uh, providing the same service at a better affordable price or better quality which has become the reason the uh, for the demand uh, poor demand so <coughs> So, there are some more examples for example, another example I have given is a clothing company currently sells blue denim jeans ok. Now, it wants to know ki suppose it would change the color to white what will happen right. So, to understand this the company's boss will be able to decide whether changing the color of the jeans to white would it be profitable or would it have an adverse effect on the entire sales. So, that means the change in color will it also have an effect. So, this is basically what marketers want to know ki if I change the design of the product, if I change the price of the product, if I increase the price, if I decrease the price, if I uh, bring newer designs, if I uh, increase the popularity through some celebrity, will the uh, brand you know the, uh, the, the profitability of the company also go with it, change with it right. Similarly, there is something uh, we have to understand between co what is the correlation and causation right. Now, you must have heard about inverse relationships, uh, uh, positive relationships, negative relationships that means sometimes uh, due to the uh, presence of a factor or growth of a factor another factor another product or another variable declines right. For example, increase in petrol price will lead to decline in sales of cars ok. Now, that is uh, uh, inverse relationship that means, if the products price increases there could be a fall, but in some other cases it uh, more hard work will lead to better uh, grade or higher uh, you know better achievements in class. Now, that is a positive relationship that means, the, uh, the more you put in hard work the more uh, hard work you put in will bring in better scores for you. So, this is a positive relationship. So, uh, but one has to understand that causation and correlation are not the same right. For example, let us go to this example. Now, now th we know that when summer increases the, uh, the you know the desire for ice creams increases right more the temperature more the uh, you know desire. But for example, although these three are very highly connected uh, things, but let us say can we say 
the let's say the melting of the ice cream now it shows suppose the ice cream is melting that is a cause what is the cause behind the melting of the ice cream not the because of the temperature what is the cause behind the sunburn now that is a cause again the temperature but do we say that cause sunburn and ice cream are correlated how do we explain that so sometimes we need to be very clear to understand ki yes when temperature increases the uh, the desire to have ice creams increases the the more uh, amount of sunburn happens in your body but let's not confuse let's not confuse that causation and correlation right sometimes we can use correlation to find causality sometimes we can find correlation that means if two variables are a and b are uh, related that may be a cause that may behave as a cause but causality might not necessarily be on the reverse or the vice versa right so one has to understand that cause and correlation are first of all two different things right a correlation might be a cause but a cause might not necessarily be uh, have a correlation right so that is what we were trying to show in this image right so there is a correlation there is no doubt about it this correlation uh, between temperature and uh, you know uh, amount of degree of ice cream is there right but the melting of the a is a cause right the sunburn is a cause right okay now let's look at some of the definitions that are used in uh, uh, causal uh, design research designs okay independent variables i just said right something that are manipulated here uh, you talk about the x1 x2 x3 test units are individual organizations whose response to independent variables or treatments being examined for example the consumers or the store on which you are conducting the research okay dependent variable we said what we are intending to measure what are those extraneous variables extraneous variables are those variables besides the independent variables for example we like store size where is the store that means what is the location of the store or how much of effort are they putting or to uh, you know and to fight the competition now these are some of the variables that are uh, basically called extraneous variables they are not directly independent variables they are not directly affecting the Uh, dependent variable but they do still have an impact they still uh, still have an impact and uh, for example let's say uh, store size is not a, a cause it's not an independent variable it is not directly affecting but it does not mean it has no effect it may still have a effect so that is although some we cannot say directly it is a cause but it has an impact so that is this uh, these kind of variables are termed and are put in in the classification of extraneous variable something extra okay now for example let's let, took this like this uh, take this example does a commitment to ethics that means if you are more ethical among media practitioners depend on their educational and professional qualification do we say that means if, if a person is more educated or less educated does that have a, have an effect on his ethical values now what is the independent variable here educational attainment how much of education he has got right what is the dependent variable now ethical how ethical right uh, he is or she is or the organization is what is the intervening variable now intervening variables are sometimes those variables which interfere and they change the they behave like a kind of a not exactly a moderator but they uh, they uh, bring in a change in the relationship right so the policy Uh, uh, of the uh, company what policies do they follow that could be an intervening variable moderating variables are sometimes also there for example uh, we say that age age affects the choice of a tourist destination or a to what place you want to visit is affected by your age so that means age moderates the more you grow in age your age grows you tend to become more spiritual in nature let's say that is general hypothesis okay similarly the more educated you are it is assumed that the more the better uh, the polished your behavior would be so these are variables which are considered under the uh, moderating variables and mostly you will find these are the demographic kind of variables okay this is a case where i think i have earlier also said uh, the company wants to know if more sales would happen with a change in their 
packaging a new box they are introducing a new box now what they have done is the same time of uh, the content is kept in both the boxes the old and the new box and then they want to uh, test ki whether if we use the new box and the old box in the change in design is the sales being different so to test that when they uh, did it uh, the company took care to avoid any outside source of bias so other biases are reduced uh, are uh, tried to avoid and then the difference between the sales is marked so the answer could be coming then is did the new packaging have any effect on the cgl sales and if yes what was the effect it could increase it could decrease so we can say ki packaging also tomorrow we can say that the hypothesis packaging does have an effect on the sales and then it is a positive or negative that depends right so basically when we are talking about causal research causal research as i had earlier stated is used with uh, the pure science is used in mostly in the pure science is understood more connected with the pure science for example engineering in labs and all so uh, what i am saying here is uh, it basically includes all the experiments so many as, uh, or all aspects of the experiment can be tightly controlled to avoid spurious results due to factors other than the hypothesized causative factors now sometimes the results comes very uh, eccentric results we get right and those results are just because sometimes of a lack of understanding of our independent and dependent variables right so suppose uh, you say tomorrow that birds are flying in the sky right and uh, let's say Uh, there was a uh, lot of uh, increase in sales for example so is there any connection between the uh, uh, birds flying in the air and the sales no not at all so these are called spurious relationships okay so uh, when we talk about experimentation we talk about lab experiments that i just said in engineering in a you know chemical lab or somewhere field experiments what we do on the field for example the marketer wants to know ki whether if i increase the uh, if i change the let's say the design of the entry to the uh, store or if i change the packaging of the uh, of my uh, product will it change in my uh, effect uh, the sales so a uh, field experiments now two words are very important as i uh, in the last class also we discussed internal validity and external validity what does internal validity mean first of all first of all validity that we understand that validity means that the instrument that you are using has to be justifying it is justified at that it is doing the job what it is intended for right now what does internal validity say internal validity says that manipulation of the independent variables the manipulation of these independent variables or treatments or treatments right actually caused the observed effects of the dependent variables that means what what does it mean it says that if suppose you are trying to study popularity popularity and these are the variables as you have taken then these variables are the ones which are actually explaining and there are no other variables as good as that right if the to have an high internal validity the researcher will have to conclude or come to a conclusion somewhere that the these are the independent variables which he has chosen are explaining but that is actually in real terms it does not happen it does not happen because however you may conduct a study however good your study may be sometimes we tend to miss some important variables although we cannot take uh, uh, you know we cannot escape by saying that this is a uh, part of life but we should try to uh, reduce it as much as possible but whatever it is human errors will always be there you will surely miss out one or two somewhere important variables also it possibly there right you might not feel they are important but they might have a very important bearing on the study so that is one is internal validity so that means the subjects that you have taken treatments that you have given actually are affecting the dependent variable second is external validity what does it mean external validity means whatever study has come out or the result has come out that should be generalizable in nature now it says the cause and effect relationships found in the experiment can be generalized okay to what populations settings times independent variables and dependent variables can the results be projected that means what if a study does not have a generalizing ability then we would say that there is a lack 
of external validity. So, external validity means that this can be utilized or projected for a for all the types of uh, you know uh, experiments or in the future. So, let us see some of the experimental designs. It says the test units uh, what uh, we have already taken. So, these are uh, these are the different uh, you know uh, uh, members in the experimental design independent variables, dependent variables, the extraneous variables and ok. Now, let us look at the different types. So, pre experimental they are divided the experimental designs are divided into four categories ok. Pre experimental, true experimental, quasi experimental, statistical for your benefit what I have done is I have in, uh, uh, incorporated these slides in between also I have tried to uh, fill it in between uh, put in between so that uh, we do not have to remember all the things right. Let us go with the first case this part ok. So, pre experimental designs do not employ randomization procedures. Now, what is uh, let us say and let us understand why what is randomization? Randomization is something where you randomly do something right you conduct a study on basis of some some random basis right. Why do we do it? Random basis by doing something on a random basis actually what we have done is we have been able to reduce the uh, um, bias in the study right. Suppose you do a uh, you do it on a judgmental basis you do you know what you are doing then there could be a bias right you are trying to do it on a on a kind of uh, public or a people or somebody whom you know they would do well. So, there is already a bias. So, to avoid any kind of bias we use randomization ok. So, the different studies are we will go to them each one of them second is the true experimental designs. So, the true experimental this is pre experimental this is true experimental the researcher is now given an ability or a scope to randomly assign the test units to the experimental groups and treatments to experimental groups. That means, the researcher can now randomly assign the values to the to the groups that are uh, uh, you know uh, available to them ok. So, by doing this what has happened? Now, they have reduced this bias ok. Causing experimental designs are the third type where the researcher is unable to achieve full manipulation of scheduling. They completely cannot manipulate the situation that means complete randomization may not be possible, but can still apply part of the apparatus of true experimentation a time series and multiple time series designs come into that. So, we will get into that slowly let us uh, let us not worry about it. This last is statistical design where a basic basic experiments are conducted and these are the most famous ones and I hope uh, you if you have gone through statistics some course you have done you must be knowing about uh, one of the most popular techniques in uh, is the analysis of variance right. So, what is this analysis of variance and why am I saying it? So, the analysis of variance is a study where we are uh, trying to st uh, study uh, uh, for a for a factor with more than two levels for example, let us say when there is a factor with two or more levels or there are more even number of factors that depends one way of n over two way n over three way, n way right. But the number of levels, so suppose you have let us say two levels let us say uh, this is sample one, this is sample two, this is sample three. Now, suppose you have three levels of data right and you want to test it. So, in such kind of tests we use the ANOVA and this is a case which we also see as you have seen the names here the we say this kind of a design which allows you for a randomization and which also allows you for a uh, for understanding or the you know the study the variance in a study of a uh, test unit we say uh, this is called the uh, basic ANOVA design right. So, we will test ki whether the sample groups are actually falling coming from the same population or not let us see ok. So, what do the what does it have you have a randomized block de design you have a basically in fact before this you have come something which is called completely randomized right and then we have a randomized block latin square and factorial designs factor latin and factorial designs are basically very similar excepting uh, there is small difference between that is the latin square design is an incomplete factorial design you can say right ok we will see that. So, let us go with an experimental design I have taken this example from the net only. So, uh, in, in case you might find some it was from uh, one of the universities uh, slide I was seeing. So, the question was does protein supplementation increase muscle increase 
Now that is the basic question. Okay. So the in the one shot case study, let's go back. So these three: one shot, one group, statistic. Okay. A single group of test units here. If you see, now this is the treatment. Treatment x is given. O is the observed value, right? A single measurement on the dependent variable is taken. O1. There is no random assignment in the one shot case study, right? So pre-experimental, there is no uh, random assignment. The one shot case study is more appropriate for an exploratory research, where the researcher wants to understand. In those cases, this is a very uh, this is a, this is a good way right but these are having its own limitations also so what is this happening now this is the uh, treatment let's say a protein powder is given and the health of the person whether i have shown you very uh, uh, good health now the health is affected it might not be correct also it might have if it would have been having no effect then we would have not shown it something like this but whatever so whatever uh, uh, is happening to the person right his mu uh, uh, muscle quality that we are measuring here Second is a one group pre-test post-test. So there was a limitation in the earlier one that there was no pre-test. So now we have introduced this pre-test. So twice it is measured. There is no control group, right? There is only one treatment group is there on which we will treat, right? That's like the sample, right? And the treatment com is computed as O2 minus O1. The validity of the conclusion is questionable since extraneous variables are largely uncontrolled. Now, what does it mean? Please uh, first understand, then uh, we can see this. Now, when I am saying, let us say, uh, let us understand from here only. Let us say, uh, ki when you are giving this, first the health of the person was taken, this is how the company is advertising, the protein was given, the treatment, and then the health was checked again, the muscle was checked again, right. But how can we say that it is only because of the protein? It could have been also because the person has changed his sleeping habits. The person has started uh, uh, doing something else which he or earlier was not doing. So these things are not taken here, right? So external variables are not controlled here. So this is the pre-test, post-test. The third is we say the static group design where two groups are brought in now, right? One was the experimental group, the other is a control group. Now why see uh, basically to understand that experimental designs were uh, developed by uh, long back by Fisher. Okay. Fisher was basically an agricultural scientist who uh, was uh, who actually gave us this wonderful technique of uh, uh, you know, experimentation where he said how different blocks of agricultural fields can give outputs right? and he then introduced that let us have put the fertilizer into maybe one group and the other group we will keep it as it is to mark the difference. right? So, something similar he did. So, experimental group is exposed to the treatment, control group is not. Okay. Measures on both the groups are made only after the treatment, please remember. So, there is no pre-treatment here. Okay. So, let us see this, treatment given group 1, placebo is that means it is a it does not have any treatment effect, there is it's a kind of a you say. Uh, uh, it has no value, uh, nutritional value or something you can understand that way, right? it is nothing, it is, uh, it is just a powder. So, which the person might feel uh, it is there or not there, so placebo and then the change in health. So, if there is a really difference between OA, O1 and OA, then we will say that this effect is because of this uh, for, um, uh, protein powder, so that is what it does. right? Now, let us go to the next, the true experimental. right? Now the first in the true experimental is the pre-test post-test control group. right? In this, if you see what we have done, test units are randomly assigned to the either the experimental or the control group, random. Earlier there was no randomization, right? now the now we have brought randomization. So that means if let us say this are this is there are uh, there are field this is a field okay? and uh, there are 4 blocks, let us say 1, 2, 3, Four. Now I early I, I can now bring in the randomization. I can use fertilizer maybe in this one and this one and not this one, these two. So right. So it is my wish. Or I can do uh, on this one and uh, this one and not these two. So whatever I do, right. So I am bringing in a randomization, right. So uh, 
a pre treatment measure is taken on each group pre treatment it is done right and the treatment effect is measured o2 minus o1 let us see this so so there is a random r is random the r stands for random right so what it has done so first there was a pre test then treatment then post test treatment pre -treat, pre test te, uh, treatment post right but this this experimentation can be done on a random basis now this is the actual protein and this is the placebo right so when we are doing this so we are able to uh, find out exactly ki what is happening ex uh, in this process okay post test only now that was pre test now this is only post test will do in the post test if you see what it is doing is the let's go back and see except for pre measurement other things remains the same except for the pre measurement other things remains the same now there is no pre measurement random assignment is there right to which group you want to put in the random group uh, you want to take treatment and which one is the control is up to you now you have taken these two values o1 and o2 and the difference o2 minus o1 o1 minus o2 for example right uh, okay this is the o1 because this is the treatment right so o1 minus o2 is your desired result okay this is uh, this is a again uh, comes under the true experimental design this is a four group design where a lot of randomization is possible it combines pre test and post test with control group and the post test only with the control group right so uh, there are four tests what is basically happening here right so if you see this four tests solomon four group design in which o1 o2 o3 o4 o5 and o6 now these two do not have any kind of a pre test there is no pre test right but for the first two this is treatment placebo treatment placebo so what has been done four basic different groups of experiments have been done in which first there was a treatment given and the pre test was taken post test was taken second there was a placebo pre test was taken post test was taken then again a treatment was given without any uh, pre treatment now why the researcher wants to do this sometimes he wants to do this because he wants to find out first of all in this case to chalo it ke, he uh, he is trying to find out the difference okay but in this case he wants to say ki maybe the pre test is not required right the pre test maybe could have the result which is coming could have become, uh, been possible because of some reasons unknown to us so let us take this as there, there is as if no pre test is allowed here and it has been the first test on these two uh, sample groups and then the difference between these four will exactly tell us ki what is the result of the or the impact of the study okay so uh, well uh, what i'll do is uh, uh, we will continue this in the next session right in the in the coming session so uh, we will finish with this uh, how the design part and then we'll move into maybe if possible sampling and explain understand the sampling processes but first let's understand the experimental design was designed to check ki how a treatment a treatment is given treatment means suppose a fertilizer is a treatment change in any uh, teaching method is a treatment if you give a treatment is actually something happening to the uh, group so or, or the result so to do this we have several tests of to we say tests of uh, means right for example a t test uh, uh, or a uh, test of variance as i showed anova right so where we try to have some treatment groups and some control groups maybe and then try to see ki what is the effect at the end to the, on the uh, final research outcome okay thank you very much